Hi everybody, Darren Lynch, founder and CEO of Irish Titan, here with another whiskey shot. I'd like to welcome one of my favorites, Chloe Fisher. Chloe, how are you doing? Hey Darren, thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm great, I'm thrilled to be here. Good, and I see you chose the appropriate color of clothing today. Absolutely, always always sporting my green when I'm uh, working with the Titan team. Right, we, we love that. We don't ever really suggest that people do that, but I don't know if it's surprising or not, but a lot of people wear green when they're on these whiskey shots with us. So why don't you introduce yourself to the audience real briefly, talk about yourself and uh, Clyde, the company you're currently working with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Chloe Fisher, as Darren mentioned. I'm the Director of Agency Partnerships at Clyde. Clyde is a Series B startup in the e-commerce space. We are an ownership enrichment platform. Um, so what that means is we're helping merchants to engage more with their end customers um, by leveraging extended warranty contracts, as well as product registration and claims automation. Cool, cool. Thanks for that rundown. Um, and thanks for all the partnership over the years. I think it'll probably be apparent to people, but Chloe and I have known each other for a long time now. So uh, good friends. Um, okay, so I think one of the things that's intrigued me about Clyde is how you're early to the market with generally what you guys are doing, right? And I think that that reflects maybe some strategic thought because you have to be strategic when you're early to the market, early with that solution, right? So I think that like the, the negative experience that people, that consumers can have with a brand um, can repel them forever, right? Whereas a positive experience can attract them forever. So talk a little bit about how you're approaching that, how Clyde Solutions approaches that interactive experience or that interaction that consumers have with brands. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I would say one thing that we're seeing, Darren, particularly with millennials and Gen Z, is they're buying more online than any other generations, right? Historically, obviously, but today they're the generations who are spending money online. And what we're seeing with those generations is they're also the most keen to purchase extended warranty. So a good study came out last year by Assurant that actually showed that. Um, offering extended warranty on a product listing page can increase a consumer's intent to buy by 25%, right? It's a pretty wow. significant um, uplift. And, you know, we see great examples of, of huge corporations doing this well. Apple, who has Apple Care and the Genius Bar. We see Best Buy with Geek Squad. I mean, in Q3 of 2019, Best Buy made 53% of their revenue off extended warranty contracts, not even product sales. And so it's historically something that's only been reserved for these super large enterprise corporations. And what, um, what we've set out to do is essentially offer a solution to merchants of all sizes. So regardless of um, how big they are, if they can't find a warranty provider partner who's willing to work with them, or if they don't want to take two years to set up a warranty program in-house, we can get them up and running online in a matter of minutes. And ultimately what this does is one, grow their revenue, but two, help their customers in the moments that matter most, which is when something goes wrong. Right. And those moments really do matter. I know COVID was um, a challenge for lots of people and lots of companies in lots of ways, but I had some really frustrating experiences with Apple and the Genius Bar. And I'm an Apple guy, so I'm not trying to throw them under the bus in general, but I left really frustrated and have considered just not uh, interacting with the Apple Store and their Genius Bar anymore to find other solutions because at those times of friction and need, if it's frustrating, you don't want to go back. Yeah, certainly. And I think to your point, you're an Apple guy, right? It's not that these products are bad. And I think merchants might think of extended warranty and think, well, I sell a really good product. Look, I've been an iPhone user for like 10 years. I love iPhone. I'd never go back to an Android, right? right. It's not that these products are bad or faulty. It's that we're humans as the end user. There's never been a laptop that I've owned that I haven't spilled a cup of coffee on. <laughs> That's just the nature of who I am as a person, right? And I think it's important for us as, as merchants, if we're putting our merchant caps on to think, all right, what am I doing throughout the entire process of a customer's journey with my product, with my brand, to make it a really positive one so that Darren doesn't walk out of the Apple store frustrated. Instead, we're sending a repair person to his house or we're sending him a new product. And so leveraging something like extended warranty, in addition to some of the other tools like product registration for OEMs who are omni-channel, claims automation so there's no snail mail paper trail, this can be great opportunities to really bridge the gap and help bring it into the 21st century. One last question around this sort of theme. I think 
Clyde's using a, a phrase that I find interesting, and I think it reflects that strategic perspective, ownership enrichment, right? So talk about that a little bit. I know we have been talking about that a little bit, but I don't want to uh, overlook that phrase because I think people can wrap their heads around that. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as you may know, Darren, Clyde had a fresh rebrand uh, not that long ago. Yeah, I do know. <laughs> Part of that rebrand was um, coining the term ownership enrichment platform. So if you've never heard of it, it's probably because we're the only ones who use it today. Um, part of the reason for us that we've we've leaned into this term ownership enrichment is we really want to help merchants to better connect with the end customer. So good research actually shows us that Gen Z and millennials, again, these these um, consumers who are buying online and are spending money on high ticket value items want a better product, also want to feel like they're part of an exclusive membership club, if you will, right? So once we convert from just being a shopper or someone who's scrolling around a website, maybe adding items to a cart, and we physically make our first purchase on that website, we're now a, a, a potential loyal advocate for that brand if things go well, right? So if we can enrich that entire cycle, anytime something goes wrong, but also if we can find more opportunities to connect and dialogue better with our end customers. For example, let's say that you're an OEM who's selling direct through a big commerce site and you're also selling on Amazon, a third party marketplace. When you're making that Amazon sale, you're likely losing visibility into that end customer data. Right. By leveraging a tool like registration where that end customer can simply scan a little QR code, go back to your website, fill out an easy form, first name, last name, email address, and now you can target them directly, especially if you, you use Clavio, which we offer an integration to, um, you can start sending them nice sequences and you can get really granular about the products that they've bought, additional accessories that go along with that product and, and focus on the upsell, but also Darren, as we know, it's nine times cheaper to retain an existing customer than go out and acquire new ones. And we wanna make sure that we're helping our merchants to be able to do that, right? How do we engage with these customers, even if they don't buy directly through us to convert them into a loyal brand advocate who loves our brand, loves engaging with us, and feels uniquely part of what we're doing. So I love that comment because one of the things I was thinking is um, how we could add some tangible substance here. And one of the hesitations that a lot of brands have with Amazon is that absence of access to customer information, right? Because yeah. the more brand intensive you are, the more you care about who your customer is and what sort of experience they're having. And the more you interact with Amazon, the less you're able to control that, let alone even be, be uh, um, visible to what's happening. So registration and warranty and Clyde solution helps close that gap. Yeah, absolutely. And it, don't come for me, Amazon. Don't come for me. But Amazon, I think for a lot of our, our OEMs, our merchants is a necessary evil. Kind right? of a friend of me. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're going to lose sales off of it um, or revenue off of it, but they're going to make more sales. They're going to increase their volume and their footprint. And, you know, one way that that I actually think of Amazon is like, it's a great listing tool for me to find brands to go purchase directly from, but I only know that because we work in e-com, right? So most consumers aren't thinking about that. And, you know, for those OEMs, for those, um, those manufacturers who are selling through third-party marketplaces, big box retail, Amazon, whatever it might be, Finding the opportunity to bridge the gap is super, super important. So what we're doing in addition to extended warranty, which certainly once they register, what's an end customer registers, we can upsell them on extended warranty, but we're also helping them to just communicate a little bit more, bridge that gap, get that visibility, get that information and that data so that you can target those guys and, and give them the same experience that you're giving your D2C customers. So that registration tool can be used uh, in third-party marketplaces and uh, for B2B to C sales, et cetera. That, that's a great tangible takeaway. So since this is a whiskey shot, not an all night kegger, let's start moving towards a uh, conclusion here. Is there a takeaway, Chloe, that you'd like to leave the audience with? Yeah, Darren, I think the biggest thing is, you know, leverage your entire marketing funnel. So uh, oftentimes I think our merchants make the mistake of only thinking about what happens up to the point of sale and the conversion up to point of sale. What we actually are encouraging our merchants to think about is the enrichment of the customer lifecycle journey, right? So let's think about everything that happens post-purchase as an extension of our marketing funnel and how we can better engage with our end customers and, and drive repeat business, right? And maybe even drive some D2C business that was historically business we were only getting on a third party. 
Does that make sense? It does. It does. Thank you for that. And thank you for the time. Thanks for all the, the laughs and the partnership over the years. Uh, Chloe, this was an easy conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Darren, thank you so much. Love working with the Irish Titan team and thrilled to be here. All right. We'll leave it there. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. More whiskey shots in the future. More to come. Slancha.